The Google homepage, a seemingly simple design, yet most website platforms can't actually build it out. I've tried building out the Google homepage on several website platforms. Here's what it looks like on Squarespace, WordPress with a basic version of Elementor, Duda, we got a lot closer with it, Webflow, we nailed it perfectly. In this video, I'm excited to build out Google on this new and exciting platform called Web Studio. Here's Web Studio if you haven't seen it before. And here is Google. So we're gonna start by building out, looks like we have three sections. We've got like the top, the middle and the bottom. All right, next let's actually just start getting some of our regions set up. So in this top section, we have like a left and right section. And so here's our top and let's just give these some names so we can easily navigate the editor. We'll go top, middle and bottom. And then in the top, we're gonna to add two boxes so we can have our left nav and right nav. And then in our left nav, we have a couple links. So let's add those. I think it was two links up there. And then on the right side, we have two links, an icon and a button. So on the right side, we're going to add two links. Oh, you could double click these to rename them. That's nice. And that's gonna be HTML. I'm gonna show you something really cool that we can do with that. And then we need to add the button. So that's just gonna be another link that we'll style as a button. I'm just gonna copy and paste all of the text in here. So we've got the proper link text going on. And now I'm gonna paste the SVG icon into this code element and boom, now we're gonna be able to see it. So we are actually needing to wrap this in another box and then we'll set the box to be 24 pixels. And let's set the top up to actually display, right? So we're gonna set this to be flex and we want both boxes of its children to go to the opposite sides. So we're gonna go here and say space between. So it's gonna force it to either end of the screen. And then from there, we're gonna separate each one of these. I've been using flex to do this too, where we say, flex and then we just set some sort of distance between them and we're going to need to style out the button too so i have some of these hex codes already copied in a separate document so i'm just switching back and forth and here we can say the background is this blue and we're going to hold shift so we can give it some padding the color is going to be white I'll go down to color do white and we've got a border radius i am just going to reference the radius and that's four pixels so go down to border and now we've got a radius on it and let's give this some padding top and bottom and then we're going to hold alt to go just the opposite side because i want this to go in a little bit more and let's just get the link styling correct so we've got the couple links up here i'm going to use a token right here just to make this a little bit easier so we're going to say menu link and then for menu link, we are going to give it this color and we're gonna get rid of the underline. So that's looking a lot more like the menu link. And I think their font size was a little bit smaller. I know I'm not trying to perfect it, but let's go 14 pixels. They use a pretty small font size. And now we can take this token and put it in over here and we're gonna inherit the exact same styles and I'm actually gonna copy it from there so I can paste it into these as well. And so this is gonna be the power of tokens. So if I do decide, actually, I want this to be a little bit bigger or whatever, I can raise this to 15 pixels. And when I hit enter, they're all gonna change. Switching between these, it looks like we are doing pretty good. Go over in here, add my image. Great, we've got that loaded. And there's one more thing I wanna change. And that is setting the loading to be eager, meaning the image will load as soon as the page loads. So now that we've got our box, let's add all of our components to it. So we've got the text input. And now we're going to add HTML because I have SVG codes. So we've got the search icon we're going to put here and we're going to call this the search icon. I'm just going to duplicate this a few times and then we're going to call this one the voice search. And then this one's going to be the image search. And then let's paste in those respective SVG codes. And if we scroll down, we can see those three icons. And now let's actually make them look good. So in the parent box, what we need to do is set this to be position relative. Let's set this to be the search icon wrapper. So this is going to be our token. And uh, let's try putting a width on these 24 by 24. And that's going to give us the proper sizing. And let's then copy this token and paste it on each of the boxes below so we can properly adjust these icons. So what I'm going to do is set the position of each child to be absolute. And because they're all sharing this token, they're all gonna go position absolute. But here's where it's really cool what Web Studio is gonna be able to do is this one I want on the right and this one on the left. Well, what we can do is actually just go over to the local one and now we're only changing this box. We're getting a little bit closer, but still it's not how we want it to look. So the actual search box is a lot bigger. It looks like it's about 582 pixels. So let's just set a width to the search box. Let's try doing the text input to be position absolute as well, but these guys are still going too far outside of the text input. So let's actually try constraining the entire width to the 
width of the text input to be that 582 pixels. And I'm actually gonna get rid of the width on the child because what we can do here is just set it to be 100% of its parent container. So we're only managing one actual fixed width. All right, the input's looking really small. So let's make it a little bit bigger. It looks like this is 46 pixels tall. I'm probably gonna just set padding and let's see how that affects the actual input. I'm gonna add a new box. This is gonna be our container that's gonna have three children. That going, so we've got our three children. And then in the first box, we have an icon. And I'm gonna use the same icons as I had over here. And I'm gonna reference the same tokens so I don't have to rebuild these styles, but it's probably gonna bring some stuff I don't want, like the positioning. So I'm just gonna hold Alt to reset that. All right, so that's the first box. The second box is going to be the input area. So let's add a new input. And then the last box is going to contain our last two icons, which are down here. So I'm gonna duplicate those, move that here. And then we've got voice and image search, same thing, put that here. Okay, so now that we have this set up, let's try a much more elegant solution to laying this all out together. Let's display flex. We're gonna make sure that it's a row and then the items are gonna be laid space between and make sure that everything's center aligned. And then let's grab those sizing again. So this was 582 by 46. Let's give it a little bit of padding all around and then we need to give it this border. So let's grab that. And then we wanna add 24 pixel radius so it curves these edges. So I'm gonna add a little bit more padding. And then this last one's kind of messing us up. So let's go to this last box and also display this flex. So they're gonna be right next to each other. And then let's just see a little separation here. That's actually a decent amount. Let's do 20 pixels. So the text input, we wanna get rid of like that border on it. So let's go nothing. So now you can't actually see it. And then let's make sure it spreads to the entire width that it can. So for this one, we are going to expand it using the flex child. Let's do a min height of like, 24 pixels, something just a little bit bigger. So now I'm gonna do a Command Shift P to preview just to see that we've got this box looking a lot better. You know, it's not perfect once you click right in there, but I'm not too concerned about that right now. I don't know if I'll even adjust that later. And this should be in the middle of the page. So let's set this to display as flex and set it to be the center and make sure it's always vertical and then the center of that box. I'm gonna add a new token called form button and set the background to be this color and change the text color and get rid of any border it has and then add some padding. And then we wanna wrap both of these in a box just to position it a little bit better. And then for the form content, I'm actually gonna display flex, go in a vertical column, and then make sure everything stays center. Looking a lot better. I'm gonna get rid of what I copied down here because we don't need that anymore, and then add the final component, which is the footer. So this is what we're adding. We've got three sections, and we're gonna add three boxes. Three links on the left, three links on the right, and an icon and link in the middle. Again, because we want these next to each other, we're gonna do display flex and I'm messing with the icon right here. And then we'll give it a little bit of a gap too of let's see, five pixels. And now we've got that icon set up. Okay, let's actually set the footer up to be flex as well. So we've got it into the row and we're gonna do space between. And then I'm gonna add all of the text in here. And then let's add a token to these and just call it footer links or link wrapper. We could do flex for this. Just a nice way to space them out evenly and say five pixels or we probably did more up top, but whatever. And do the same thing for this box and now we need a token to style the links you'd think we'd use the same one as the top for this menu link but for whatever reason google uses just slightly different colors for their links so we'll just call this a footer link and set the color and then remove the underline but we're not going to be able to see it that well right now because i have to set the background but let's just paste these okay and let's actually set the background color of the footer oh and see i accidentally screwed this up so i pasted the wrong color in here but this is the power of these tokens is i messed up the color no problem change it and it'll change on everything that has the token and now for the actual footer color which i was using for the links we are going to set the background to this guy and then give it some padding and that's looking a little bit better we're gonna make the font size smaller down to 14. now we're seeing a problem the footer is all the way up here because the page doesn't have enough content to push the footer down what we're gonna do is go up to the body we're gonna display flex that's gonna mess everything up but we're just gonna say lay it out in a column and now we're gonna say the minimum height to this is 100 VHs. So now the entire body takes, it goes all the way down here. Now we have to force this to go to the bottom and we can do that with the flex child. So let's get rid of this min height 
for the body flex flex column but then height we're gonna do a hundred percent and now we're gonna go over to the main contents which we probably need to add one wrapper for the main contents and that's going to be set to flex one display flex and that's going to be i believe that and then the footer is going to be at the bottom because of this now google's not in the center they don't actually do that i don't, I don't know exactly what it is but like we can like they just have like a height set to this section which we can do too let's just expand this a little bit and the footer is a little bit unaligned right now so i'm going to change that i think we can do this by doing this guy and then saying everything is in the center okay we're just about there i set a min width to the bottom to be 30 percent and we just need to align the right one on the end okay that's looking pretty good let's go to google minor inconsistencies with spacing and stuff like that but that's that's no testament to the actual website builder. That's just, again, me not putting in all the effort to get it exactly the same. We can see that Web Studio does in fact have these advanced capabilities to lay out content in what seems to be a simple way. If you're not in web design, this looks super simple, but like once you start getting into it, you start to question all of this stuff. But all in all, I'm pretty stoked on what we've created here. So the verdict is Web Studio is the platform. It's super flexible, super capable. And if you guys wanna know more about Web Studio, then check out this video. Peace guys.